The sun casts long shadows in this corner of northeast Syria, despite the promise of spring. Two Yazidi women caught here in an unhappy limbo. Captured by ISIS in 2014, they are now mothers to the children of men who raped them and helped in the slaughter of their people. 30-year-old Nadia, not her real name, was sold to a Syrian militant at a slave market in Raqqa. She saved her sister and nephew by saying they were her own children. Shireen, younger, is from Kojo, a ghost town in Iraq after ISIS killed most of its men and boys and took the women. She was given to an Iraqi. Getting pregnant, she says, made it less likely he'd sell her on. He was killed as the Islamic State crumbled, and she found herself in a vast detention camp for ISIS families. Despite being a victim, she hid from the family looking for her. Despite all these women have endured, the Yazidi community won't allow them home unless they abandon their children. Yazidi heartland in neighboring Iraq isn't far as the crow flies, a few hours and a border crossing. Last month, helped by an NGO, nine Yazidi women returned to Syria to collect the children they'd been convinced to leave behind. It enraged Yazidi leaders. Lalish, in the mountains above Nineveh, is home to the holiest of Yazidi temples and to the ancient faith's spiritual council. Prince Harman is a spokesman. The problem is if they bring these children back under Iraqi law, they'll be considered Muslim, he says. I'll support providing them a place somewhere, but not in the community. Even if Iraq changed its laws, the Yazidi faith only recognizes people born to two Yazidi parents. And although elders were persuaded to welcome Yazidi women who've been raped home, says Prince Harman, they will not accept the children of ISIS militants. Mahmoud Rasho. He runs, with his mother's help, a kind of way station back in Syria for Yazidi women he's helped find and rescue, including Nadia and Shireen. Everybody knows it was a kind of genocide, he says, so it was a duty for me. But he also sees the so-called ISIS children as potential bargaining chips in his quest. In other words, he believes he can trade them for people or information. And so the sanctuary offered by the Syrian garden with its long shadows could be short-lived, replaced by a trap. But as they sit, mothers and children burrowing into each other, Nadia and Shireen insist they won't be parted from their children, no matter how painful for their families or their faith. <laughs> If they don't, they will look for their horizon elsewhere, far from home and the stigma it has attached to them. Margaret Evans, CBC News, Northeastern Syria.